Okay, and again, from left to right, we have uh, quarterback John Rice Plumley, defensive end Josh Seliscar, running back Isaiah Bowser, head coach Gus Malzahn. Uh, we'll begin, Coach, if we could just get your thoughts on the game and then we'll open up to questions. Yeah, please. first of all, you got to give Tulane a lot of credit. Uh, they're a really good team. We knew that coming in. They played really good. Um, you know, we didn't play our best. Uh, I think that's obvious, but they had something to do with that. Uh, proud of our team fought, you know, fighting back. It was really tough. We got off to a tough start. Um, you know, we fought back. I think it was 30, 31 28, and it was right there before us. Give them credit. They went down and scored, and we never could get that momentum back. But we have a bunch of champions. There's three guys right here that uh, are winners with a capital W that I'm proud of that, uh, you know, they led us and got us here. Take questions, please. Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Coach Brandon Howard with Rivals.com. Can you talk about John Rice and just his play? Obviously, you took him out because he was not 100%, but then he goes back in the game and yeah. he gets you back in it within three. Talk about his performance. Yeah, he's one of the toughest players I think I've ever coached. Uh, I mean, his hamstring was was bad, you know, all week he practiced. But, you know, that fourth and one, he just couldn't get, you know, around the corner right there. And so felt like there we'd go with Tommy and give him a – uh, a shot. Tommy did some really good things. He's going to be a phenomenal quarterback. It was just he was put in a tough spot. But the fact that you know, he wanted to go back in and he went back in gave us a spark. Um, and can't say enough, you know, good things about John Rice. Coach, what went into the decision to uh, make Thomas Castellanos as the backup quarterback today? Uh, you know, he was our number two guy. You know, obviously Mikey didn't dress, and you know, really at the first of the year, me and Mikey had a conversation. We were going to do our best to try to. You know, honor that um, you know, four game, so he wouldn't lose eligibility. And uh, you know, unfortunately, we had to play him last week. And I, I'll say this: we wouldn't be here without him. And uh, but Thomas is going to be a great quarterback uh, in his own right. And John Rice really battled hard. John Rice, talk about the week of practice. How how did you feel all week? How did you feel going into the game today? Um, you know, at this point of the year, everybody's got something. You know. Uh, cut bruises, bumps, um, and it's just one of those things that, <clears throat> just like everybody else, like Celis Scar has a hamstring issue going on too, and it's just one of those things that um, you, you rehab and you try to get better, try to get to 100%, you know, and um, obviously practice, I did what I could do, you know, and um, ultimately uh, tried everything to be able to play in the game, you know, that's what that was the goal, whether if it was. 85% or if I was 90% if I was 100% I wanted to be able to play in this game um, and so we tried to prepare as such Gus what was the timeline for Mikey when did you know he wouldn't be playing today uh, we had a conversation earlier in the week and um, so you know Thomas got the reps in practice with John Rice and so that's the way we went about it John Rice, how, how tough was it to play in this game you know you went out but you came back in how tough was that uh not, not, it's not tough. I mean, it's it. You you work all year to be able to play in a game like this, and I don't think it. It's not hard to play. You know, it's something that you want to do. Um, you you work, and this team has worked to get to this point. Um, and so I didn't want to sell uh, myself short or sell this team short. Coach, what was your thinking in bringing John Rice back in after Thomas was in the game? Yeah, I just, you know, uh, we put, you know, Thomas was in a tough spot, but he did some really good things. But John Rice just kept telling me, Coach, hey, give, give me another chance. I'll operate. You know, may not be able to run as good, but operate. And so put him back in, and, um, you know, he really gave us a, a spark and a shot in the arm. And like I said, when it was 31-28, I mean, we had the momentum right there, and it was, uh, it was a good ball game at that point. How much work did Thomas? Yeah, he got all the number two reps right there. And like I said, Thomas is going to be a phenomenal player. And just the fact that he was able to do what he did, you know, I was real impressed. At the time, we just felt like their defense is so good. We needed our quarterback to be a little bit of a run threat right there. And then, you know, John Rice with his hamstring, and he's such a tough individual. And um, so that was our thinking. What were the conversations like with Thomas? Because this, you know, burns his red shirt. But did he did he come to you, or was he willing to play? What were yeah, these conversations he like? Play. He wanted to play, and um, you know, he'll help us. We'll we'll do some things in the bowl game. I try to make it worth his while. But the fact that you know he was ready to go, I mean, um, like I said, he's a real special one. Gus, are you able to speak about what kind of was said in the locker room just following that game, just for it being the last AAC game you guys are playing? Yeah, I was just told our guys. I'm proud of them for getting us here. Um, you know, proud of them for fighting back. You know, we didn't get off to a great start. The crowd was phenomenal here, but they, 
kept fighting, and uh, you know we'll uh, have a bowl game and and uh, end, end with a, a good season. Josh, can you talk about uh, that big defensive stop where you're able to strip the ball and get the turnover right when Tulane was on the verge of scoring? That you know could have been, you know, that was a huge play to get back in it. Just talk about what you saw and the effort, how the defense, you know, didn't let down. Uh, on that, on that stop, um, I just felt like uh, I read the play, and then I just hustled to the ball and made a big play. Uh, the defense played great today, not not to our not to our standard, but we played uh, the best game we could. Uh, some stuff you just you can't change. They made, we made mistakes. We tried to play our best, but it is what it is. Isaiah, what are the emotions you come back and you find that the team gets into this American Athletic Conference Championship? The goals are within reach. What, what are you feeling right now? Uh, you know, it hurts for sure. You know, a lot of work put in to get to this point. Um, and especially throughout the game, you know, we got the momentum coming back and um, we're, we're able to get it done. So it definitely hurts right now. John Rice, just what do you take away from a game like this? Obviously, it was a lot of probably blood, sweat, and tears out there today for you. Yeah. Um, like Bowser said, it hurts. Uh, rips your heart out, you know. Um, yeah, it hurts. It's one of those things that um, if it doesn't hurt, then then this doesn't mean nothing to you. You know what I mean? Uh, like, like you said, blood, sweat, and tears went in through this season to get to this point. Um, yeah, man, it hurts. Josh, it seemed like Tulane was able to score on a lot of really long plays, 60-yard touchdowns, 70-yard touchdowns. What, were those the mistakes that you were kind of referring to, or did you kind of see something that they were able to do that, that kind of broke down the defense? I guess it was just like the personnel that we were in. They caught us in the personnel that best fit their play, and um, they had big plays off of it. But to me, it's like we tried, we played our best. Um, we made a lot of mistakes, missed a lot of tackles. That's all it is. Gus, were you were you surprised over here to your left, sir? Were you surprised that they could make that many big plays in the passing game? Did that kind of shock you a little bit? Yeah, you know, we, we've done a really good job, uh, you know, keeping explosive pass plays uh, really the last two years, and that's probably as many as we've had maybe combined. Uh, give them credit. Um, they, you know, they played really, really good in the biggest game, and those big plays were, you know, a, a huge part of the game. Gus, what's next for this team? You mentioned the bowl game, but the transfer yeah. portal opens on next week. And yeah. What's next for this team? Well, what, what's next is a bowl game, and we need to, to, to win a bowl game to get some momentum for next year. You know, you look at, you know, last year we won a big bowl game. This year we made it to the conference championship. I mean, we're going in the right direction as a program, and these three guys and the rest of the leaders have a whole lot to do with that. We're disappointed right now, but the future is really bright for our program. Do you need a bowl win to consider this a successful season? I mean, uh, uh, bowl, bowl, it's been – yeah, I'll say this. I mean, bowl games are very important, okay, just like it was last year. So we'll put everything we can into getting a bowl victory. Okay, thank you. Thank all. you. <laughs>
He ran and threw the ball very effectively. Tajay had another great game. And when we needed stops defensively, we certainly did it. So, uh, you know, there's a point in there. We almost kind of got the game uh, where, where I think we would have been totally under control, uh, in control of the game. But we uh, all we had a fumble, and we fumbled a couple series later, and, and we made it kind of tough on ourselves. But uh, came up with some big plays to win the game. So just very, very proud of this team effort. Coach, what did you think about the atmosphere today, and how much do you think that impacted the game today? I thought the atmosphere was outstanding. I just, you know, this first time, obviously, since I've been here, I came came out for warm-ups, and over an hour before the game, we probably already had two or 3,000 students out there in the end zone, and uh, so they, they did their part. You know, it was, a, uh, it was good. I think we finally got people out of the Glacier Club out and watching the game instead of eating that great food and drinking daiquiris up there. So we had a, a second level look like it was full too. Hey, Willie, what did you think about Tajay's run from your vantage point and just what has he meant to this team this season? You know, I've seen him do that so many times. You know, he just uh, he kind of has eyes in the back of his head and he's got outstanding speed and uh, I'm not sure how many yards he had. I guess he was over 200, 199 yards is what he Ended up having, uh, you know, he, he's, he's just an outstanding player. I, I think he's a pro back. I don't, I don't think he, there's any doubt about that. Coach, we, we, back here. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, Coach, sorry. back here. Uh, you guys were very clear before the season that the goal wasn't just to get to a bowl game. It was to win an AAC championship. Now that you see the confetti coming down at Yeoman Stadium, just what's it like to win your first ever AAC championship here at Tulane? Well, it was huge. You know, it really was. And, and uh you know, I've said it many times before, we had those three years we went to bowls and came really close to kind of, you know, uh, getting, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten wins and didn't just finish some games. And uh, then obviously we had a tough year last year, but uh, this year the guys have never doubted and, and uh, you know, it just have shown incredible resiliency. I'm just very, very proud of them. You know, it's a great group of 18 to 22-year-olds. And, and I'd say that if we would have lost tonight, they're just – they're unbelievable kids. They really are. Willie, how concerned were you going through the week, given how much you were in the news? And obviously, what was I in the news about? What? Possibly leaving. Oh, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. Well, I sure am glad I stayed. You know, and and uh, you know, I made a commitment to these kids, and and uh, you know, and I, the last thing I ever wanted want to be is a distraction. You know, and I'm I'm uh, you know. So I'm, I'm just proud to be here. Coach Wynn, back here. With Central Florida closing the gap, what can you say about the offense just responding in the way that they did to jump back yeah, ahead? Yeah, a couple, couple big, you know, answers. You know, that long touchdown pass to Deuce. And, uh, and then uh, also, obviously, Shea. That was a big-time catch and run by Shea Wyatt. You know, so they, they really answered well. And if I can ask you, too, about the effort of Nick Anderson and Tajay Spears to gut it out, seemingly dealing with injuries in this game, to stay in this game throughout. Yeah, they, you know, they push through and, and uh, you know, they, they're, they're tough kids. You know, they, they uh, knew we needed them and, and rested a little bit. Some other guys came in and, and, and they played extremely well. They're banged up a little bit, but they, they, they came out and played hard. Coach, we talk about the run game all the time, and it's really rolled well, but the passing game has also done a really great job this season, and especially tonight. What do you think has made that roll so well this year? Well, if you, if you can, you know, sometimes a run sets up the pass. Sometimes a pass sets up the run. And uh, we had them both clicking tonight, and they needed to pack the box a little bit to stop us running the ball. And, you know, it gives you one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And, uh, you know, the guys, you know, Shea, you know, had some big catches. And, Quan Jackson, that was a huge catch on third and 10 that he made, and I think we scored. Maybe the next play, I'm not sure, but that was a really big catch by him. Did you have any inkling that you might be seeing their freshman quarterback when you were preparing? thought maybe, you know, they, uh, you know, sometimes when you say one guy's going to play and he's healthy, you kind of know that maybe he's not. I don't know, but... Uh, uh, you know, and Plumlee came in there at the end, did a good job throwing the ball. Coach, considering the injuries that John Rice Plumlee had, the hamstring, what would you say about the job he did, the heart he showed? I think he's 
know, tough kid and, uh, you know, had some nice, nice throws tonight. Also extended some plays, hard to sack two or three times. We had him and I thought we were going to get him down and we didn't get him down. So he's a strong, strong kid too. Willie over here. Did, two questions. Did formationally, did you do something that opened up the pass? And two, did you ever think that this day would come? Yeah, I always thought it was going to come. I really did. I, I'm very optimistic, and, and uh, you know, every time we go into a game, we believe we're going to win. You know, and we, I just, you know, when I took this job, you know, seven years ago, I thought this could could happen here. It's a it's a great area to recruit. It's a you know, it's an outstanding academic institution. And you just got to find the right guys. You know, and it took me a few years to kind of learn that. You know, which guys value an education, which guys value living in the great city of New Orleans. Uh, you know, we've done a good job of finding those guys. Not too much different. You know, it's uh, mostly a lot of the same things we've ran all season. Did you get a, a sense of what Tajay had to play through after he went down on the sidelines, exactly what that was? And I have a follow-up. But... Oh, I, I, I think he got a hit pointer is what he got. And uh, – and then he went, I think he went in right before third quarter and uh, came back out, and he, he was fine. And, um, I mean, there were in the, in the game as a whole, there were five touchdowns, 43 yards or longer. I mean, does, does the game of football ever cease to amaze you in general, and what was it like? We had some big plays. You know, we've kind of been a grinded out, and we did grind out, the, I think, the first drive, but uh, had some big plays. You know, that's a big key with offensive football is get the ball in the hands of the playmakers who can – Make a you know a ten yard catch into a fifty yard gain, and you know Shea had a had a huge one down the sideline, broke some tackles, now ran some guys. So uh, yeah, you uh, you know we we we've got you know four or five receivers who can take it the distance. Obviously, we've got some backs who can do it, and then I thought Michael ran the ball well. It was really nice when he, when he kept it on on the speed sweep power and and uh, ran it in from I don't know fifteen twenty yards out. When did you really feel comfortable that the game was, was out of reach? Was it when Pratt ran for that touchdown or what? Yeah, you know, then was, you know, we were up there and we're going to have to get set three scores, you know, so it was going to be pretty difficult with the time left. But, you know, I don't feel comfortable until there's zeros on the clock. Everybody for, good? For, yeah. yeah, I just had for the players, um, either one of you, how um, – how hard was it to actually walk off the field with the celebration that was going on there after the game? I mean, is it, you really wanted to soak it up or what? I mean, it was a moment that uh, I'll never forget. Um, it was obviously hard uh, walking off the field, but, uh, you know, thank you for all the fans that came out as well. Yeah, I think the, um, the feeling that I got with that, I never got that feeling in my life, you know, and, uh, and to see all these fans supporting us come to this game and see how they flood the field made me feel great, so, you know. It was great to see that. We got this Darius Hodges, Shea White, Tajay Spears coming up. Everybody good with me? I'm going to go drink some beer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you all right, okay. hey, Tajay, can you? Over in the back. Can you just talk me through your 60-yard touchdown run, what you saw on that play? Um, just what, we do, uh, what we've been doing all week, really. Uh, just got to make, make one guy miss. And, like, I know I knew, like, if, you could, if I could cut the ball back across the field, I knew I was going to score because sometimes they'd be, poor, uh, be poorly pursuing at, at tackling. Tajay, you obviously come in here with a little discomfort. We saw you go back into the game, obviously dealing with injury. How important was it for you to finish out this game to make sure you guys were conference champions? Um, just whatever it took. Like, I knew my team needed me, and also I need them in due time. Just me being on the field, just fighting the last fight with my brothers. Uh, right here, just two, two quick ones. The first one, um, just your reaction to the fans storming the field and what it was like to, to be out there for that after you know, all you've been through at Tulane. 
It was uh, really cool, especially coming from like two and ten now, like at the top of the conference, AAC champions, and like it's just it's just amazing. Like I couldn't like I, two every two steps I had to take a picture, so it was just amazing, man. Like we we, we blessed to have a fan base like that. And then I just on the back going back to the run. I mean, could you more specifically? I don't know if you, how well you remember it, but you had to slip two tackles near the line of scrimmage. I don't know remember what you saw there, and then just all the thinking that went into. I mean, hurdling your own teammate, cutting back, the whole thing. I mean, did you have a sense that you were going to break it? Yeah, because, um, yeah, like, that was my thing. Like, I will always, like, throughout the season, like, I always break big run, big runs and like, I never fin finish with a touchdown. So I was like, you know, let's just try something. Let's try to uh, finish with a touchdown. And it worked out for me. This one's for all the players. Uh, you guys are likely going to a New Year's Six Bowl. Just how does that feel to be able to experience that opportunity? I'm going to start. Go ahead. I, I better say I started. Um, I don't like it's a, it's a different feeling. Like I never, you know, I never want to, you know, ring a big ring for a conference championship. And you know, with a feeling like this, like it's hard to explain. I'm just really thankful for all the leaders on our team. I'm thankful for the way that uh, Nick and Dorian lead our defense, and they've been, you know, they're some great leaders. They, I'm, I'm really uh, blessed to have them as my leaders and play on the defense with those guys. So it's an honor. It's a blessing, like. Um just a day-to-day -day grind, a day-to-day -day battle. It's finally paying off. Of course, we're not nowhere near done, but you know, it's finally paying off. You know, you can actually look in the mirror and actually like get your guys together and like smile because you know, it's just amazing. Like, like last year, or you know, two, three months ago, we wasn't we wasn't ready in this moment. So like, we just got to be appreciative for everything, every single thing that come our way. Shea, it got pretty tight there in, in, in the fourth quarter, and then you had the touchdown to put it back up ten. What was the what was the feeling like? And, and did it get a little nervous there for a while? And, and, and how did you feel when you got to the end zone there? Yeah, uh, well, the play before, uh, Jaquan Jackson made arguably the biggest play in, in the game. And, uh, you know, so salute to him. And, uh, you know, just seeing all my other teammates uh, succeed and, uh, you know, playing the game that they love, I mean, that fuels me as well. So, I mean, during that play, I mean, Pratt had enough time. Our O-line held up, and uh, he, he delivered a good ball. and. You know, the rest is history. I just did what I could do. For the players, what should the rings look like? Big. <laughs> big and heavy. Big with a green, big jewel in it. Better be dancing. <laughs> big old wave. 2 and 10 and 11 and 2, baby. That's what it should look like. For Tajay and Shay, uh, 648 yards of offense. Uh, just what was it like to have so many guys to contribute to that tonight? I mean, like, like I said, it's a dream come true. I mean, I think, I, can, I think it's safe to say that everybody in our locker room had dreamed of this, you know, playing for a conference championship and then going on to play in the Cotton Bowl. So, I mean, today we just we had to lock in, we focused, and, uh, you know, the plays, they were just there. Um, it's just like, you know, day in and day out, you see everybody working for it. See everybody like you know busting their butt at practice, and it's, it's finally paying off. So we who we need it all. We need all of the contributors tonight. So like I'm I'm very appreciative for everybody that contributed. To the, well, how much you say six hundred and some forty eight yards? I'm very appreciative okay. for every every single soul that uh, pre, uh, participated in that. But you know you can't you can't go through all this without saying you know thank thanks to the O line. So you know O line held up. They they did a great great job tonight. Question for. Uh... All three. I'll start with Tajay. Just you mentioned two and ten to to where you are right now. Uh, the brotherhood aspect of that two and ten season, overcoming kind of the hurricane aspect. And can you talk about the brotherhood? Not so much the talent of this team. Do you feel like that talent was always there, but the camaraderie is kind of what put y'all over the edge this season? Oh, that's a perfect question. This man right here, like I was having a bad season. Uh, in a, uh, I, I kind of got off to a rough season. And the start, so he was there. My brother, he picked me up, and you know, and, and it happened to him. I'm like, okay, like you know, he was there for me, and I picked. He picked me up, so I gotta pick him up. Like, even if he wasn't there for me during that time, I'm still gonna pick him up. Like, that's how much you know. That's how much we believe in each other. That's how much love we got for each other. Like, we've been through so much in these last past four years, and like, even with Shay, like, like no matter what, I, I got you. Like, you know, I'm one phone call away. No matter what time it is, what you know, what time of night it is, and no matter what you need, I'm coming. So that, that's how I, that's how I view our brothership here. I honestly think the bond that I done built with Tajay and Shay and really the bond that we built together, like it's going to be a bond that will never just go away. 
because of the hard times that was involved in the bond and that we uh, overcame a lot of stuff, you know. I can say Sincere, Dorian, Nick, Tajay Pratt, it's all the leaders on the team, you know, who said, okay, we, we're going to change this around. We, we gonna, we're not going to be a 2 or 10 team or just a bow edge team. You know, we want to make a difference and, you know, and do something special. And I, and I really took my hat to those guys because, they, you know, they gave me hope sometimes when I need it, you know. And it's, I think that's how it works with all our, with all, all our players. So. Yeah, p piggybacking off of what uh, these two had said, you know, this brotherhood is strong. And uh, part of it, uh, it had happened in Birmingham when, you know, we got displaced and we were in the hotel. And uh, it was tough. I mean, you know, we were getting beat every week. I mean, like, like everybody knows, we were 2-10. and 10, And, I mean, they were just throwing dirt over us. And for a while, I mean, it was hard to bounce back. But, you know, if you keep your faith and, and you believe in your brothers that are next to you, I mean, flowers will grow. I promise you. And I hope this is a testament to anybody out there. I mean, if you continue to work hard, no matter what season you had before, I mean, if you look and you believe in the person next to you, anything can happen. Guys, uh, you've seen so many games on television where the fans storm the field. Did you ever think, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to experience that just once? Yeah, yeah it's definitely surreal. I mean, just being in the moment, um, you know, seeing all the other schools with their success and having their fans storm the field, I mean, eventually, yeah, like everybody wants that. I'm, I'm just glad we got to do that tonight. Yeah, it, it ain't really even seem real, man. Then my elbow hurt, and they kept on pulling <laughs> on me. Man. I'm like, hey, chill out a little bit. But uh, it, 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 was, it was an amazing feeling, man. Like, you know, we came by those moments, man. Like, that, that, that's something that'll stick with us for the rest of our life. Man. Like, they don't even know how much they made our day. Like, you know, all the hard work. It's just amazing, man. You know, this is gonna be a day we, we probably we, I know that we'll never forget. You know, I I enjoyed the fans just storming the field, but the biggest thing I enjoyed was seeing my teammates, the joy on my teammates' face, and how it just so happy and how this like how we change this thing around. And I I just love to see my teammates happy. And I think that's the biggest thing I took from it. You know, so. Darius, six sacks tonight, and you got when they brought their freshman quarterback in. How good do you guys feel like you were in pretty good shape, and just and how did that work out? I feel like we had a great plan, you know, uh, Coach Hemp, you know, I, I, he, one, he one of the smartest coaches I ever been, been around, T-Rob, you know, that's, that's my dog. And we had, you know, a great plan, stopping the draw, stopping things like that that they hurt us on in the previous game. You know, t I took my head to um, Plumlee, you know, he's a great quarterback and that freshman quarterback, but you know, um, I think we had a great plan. You know, I'm proud of the way our D-line played and our linebackers played and getting on out the quarterback, so. For all three of you guys, how much do you realize how big this is in the history of the program? I mean, do you kind of, do you ignore it? Do you embrace it? How do you approach that? Uh, I, I don't think it'll hit us until probably years from now, honestly. I mean, we just, like Tajay had mentioned earlier, we just came in and worked hard every day. And, uh, you know, we ended up here. And, you know, obviously for the city, I feel like it'll be good for them. But, you know, for us, I, I don't think it'll hit us until we're done playing. Uh, to me, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's, we're a part of history forever, so that's an amazing thing. So, I don't know. It, I, it might hit us about like two, three years from now. Uh, we got our family. Uh, we got our reunion. I don't know. I don't know. That's a hard question. I think it'll be great for the uh, history of Tulane, you know, and, and us being a championship team. You know, change. You know, uh, Coach Fritz changed the uh, projection of this program. You know, when he got here, and uh, you know, just keep trusting the Fritz and his plan. You know, he's a great coach and he has a great coaching staff. So I think that the Tulane history, you know, will forever be changed behind this. Right here, just a thought. Had you guys ever looked up during practice or a game at those bowl recognition, that are kind of like banners or whatever they are, and there's one that says Sugar Bowl 1939, and just thought about, I wonder what it was like way back then when <laughs> Tulane could go to bowl games like that. No, nah, we ain't look up and saw that because I looked at I looked at that the other day. I said, "Damn, we finna have an AAC conference championship right there." <laughs> That's why I, I swear, like I ain't lying. I'm for real. Like I saw it. I don't know. Like, "Dang, we really finna be AAC championship." I think the the biggest one I always looked at was the undefeated team that it was here. I think it was 1999 to 2000. Well, uh, Sean King, quarterback. You know, he does different things with our programs and talks. You know, he has he's a great guy with a whole lot of wisdom. And I was thinking about, back to things like that, what made them so great and, you know, how they turned, turned things around at Tulane. You know, I, was, I felt like that we had the same opportunity to do this at Tulane and make history again. So I'm glad that we was able to do it today.
guys, you, you might wind up playing USC. If you did, how much do you, of an opportunity do you think that would be to play them? One and zero, still. Oh boy, you took the word out of my mouth. Yeah, it's still one and zero. It doesn't really matter who the opponent is. It don't matter when you got this guy right here. It don't matter. Bro. Then we look at every opponent the same way. You know, I, that's why I can <clears throat> tip my hat to the, the coaching staff. They don't let us get too high, too low. We straightforward. We look. Okay, this opponent got this and that. You know, we don't really care. We want to know. We just want to be one to know, and we just take every opponent series. It's just like last week, the week before that, and so far on. So. Hey, Michael, over here. What what did you kind of see on on Taj's run, his touchdown run, a sixty yard run? What do I got to say about it? Like, what did you sort of see on the play? I saw a lot of dudes and a lot of missed tackles, a lot of break tackles. Um, you know, that's just what he does. Um, you know, he makes he makes his game a lot easier for me. Uh, he makes it a lot of fun um, and definitely opened up the passing game, you know, the way they have to respect the run and, you know, just kind of try to dial in on that. It's, it's tough to be a defense and try to play offense like that. It's two-dimensional. Um, and, you know, we executed tonight. We had some big plays. And, you know, huge credit to offensive line, running backs, receivers, uh, and coaches especially with the play calls. Michael, what were your thoughts, first thoughts when you – ran it in for that touchdown that, that totally sealed it with four minutes left? Um, well, initially, uh, I, saw the, I saw the Mike Backer walk down, uh, blitzing off the edge. And you know, that's the guy we're reading. Um, he, he took uh, keys on the motion. And uh, you know, gap opened up. You know, offensive line did a great job and uh, really made it easy. You know, it would have been hard not to score there. How did you feel when you got I me? Mean, that obviously ended the game. Yeah, no, it was awesome. Um, you know, we, we, had to stay locked in um, and, you know, finish it out. But, you know, at, at that point, we kind of knew. Uh, Michael, I asked other three players this, and uh, they uh, didn't know how to feel about it. But how much do you, do you realize how big this is for the history of this program? Uh, it's huge. Uh, I believe the first, first conference championship. Um, you know, and you know, we kind of set it in stone after last season. Um, you know, we knew the goal at hand. Uh, Nick Anderson has been kind of one of our more vocal leaders, and you know, he he set this from the beginning. You know, after the last game last year, uh, coming back into the off season, um, you know, he, he preached it every single day. You know, every uh, player led meeting we have, you know, we entered it with a conference championship uh, trophy picture, um, and and we knew that this was our goal, and you know, kind of just manifested it every single day, and it paid off. Over here, Mike. I I know you kind of a football historian guy, when you, when you watch games on TV and when you see, and I ask the other players this, you see fans storming the field. Did you ever say, golly, I'd like to be at least part of that at least once in my career? No doubt. Um, you know, that, that's something that's super special. And, you know, obviously when that happens, you know, you've done something significant. And, uh, you know, it was awesome to, to close out that game and have those fans so fired up. Uh, Michael, going off the last question, can you talk about the atmosphere at the game today and how much the fans impacted uh, y'all's outcome? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, you know, they packed it out. Um, they've been awesome, you know, all year. And, you know, just having that atmosphere and, you know, getting loud in there, you know, definitely gave us the edge to this victory. To this, to this victory. Michael, just when you think about um, – Almost 400 yards passing, four TDs, and the total yardage, I think, about 440 with five TDs altogether. I mean, how close does that come to what you would have envisioned or expected coming into today? Or is football just such a crazy game, you never, you never know how it's going to happen? Yeah, um, you, you never know how it's going to unfold. Um, you know, I knew we were going to be successful in what we did because of our preparation uh, all week. And, you know, the guys that we got on this team and, you know, the play callers behind us, um, you know, no matter if it was me with, 10 completions and 100 yards, and Taja with 400 running yards. Um, you know, it doesn't matter, but, you know, we got the job done and, you know, led us to the victory, and it was exciting. For, uh, for all four of y'all, uh, how proud of you guys, of maybe yourselves, that look, earlier in the week there was potential distraction with Coach Fritz and the news there, and then you guys come out, he stays, you guys respond and play super well, win the championship. I mean, how, just how did you kind of handle the week and kind of get through that possible distraction. Um, well, we had a we had a player led meeting uh, Monday morning, and you know, kind of just emphasized that you know, no matter you know what the circumstances or what's going on around us, uh, it's really up to us. 
you know, the players. And, you know, we've done everything we could since the off season to get us here. And, uh, we, you know, we weren't going to let anything distract us or, you know, kind of push us away from the, the one goal at, at hand. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. You know, we can't worry about a lot of things that's going on. I don't think we really just focus on, like, what we got going on as players. Because at the end of the day, we got to go on, on the field and make the plays. You know, they put us in the best positions. And also, we, you know, we love Coach Fisher. We don't want them to go nowhere. But, you know, at the end of the day, we got to do what we got to do. To piggyback off what they said, you know, I feel like nothing changes. You know, we have, we set our goals. And, you know, and I, there's one thing I can say. We had player-led set goals. You know, uh, the leaders on our team, they do a lot with us, you know. And I really tell my head coach, uh, Fritz, for the floor that he gives the uh, players and the captains on our team to help help us run our football team. And, you know, the biggest thing we want to do is just go one another every week. So. Thank you.